we were speaking a little bit a while ago about, you know, what is it about the, not just in places like Argentina, but use Argentina as an example, about the sort of the culture, particularly amongst working class people, that sort of um, uh, allowed folks once the economy crashed there to, to do things like take over factories and then turn them into worker run sort of businesses. Um, what is about that that maybe, you know, we can learn from um, and can sort of build on the work that has been begun by the Republic Windows and Doors workers? Well, um, I, I guess the most fundamental lesson from, from both the experiences of people uh, abroad and, and that of Republic workers is that working people have to fight, right? I mean, uh, sometimes we have to fight just for what's owed to us. Um, and we know we're going to have to fight for what we deserve, which isn't always, you know, what we're guaranteed under the law or what, a, you know, a boss owes us, um, but that we can, if we fight, um, we can really begin to win some of the things that, that working people uh, deserve and need to survive. There are, it's a real shame in the richest country in the world that there are people who work and still, you know, earn poverty wages. That there are people who work and lose their babies because of it. That there are people who, who can't find work at all, right? And some, I mean, in Michigan is a really, you know, kind of stark example of, of how, how corrupt the, you know, internally corrupt the system is, right? That it, it'll, it'll leave workers behind. People who are building the wealth that uh, other people are benefiting from. Um, can actually end up just aiding and creating that gap between the rich and the poor because the system just doesn't work for them. We're going to have to fight to change that. It, um, I think that's the kind of foundational lesson we can learn both from the experiences of work, workers fighting abroad and, and over public windows and doors and then the other examples that, you know, that have happened since, so the heart marks workers and other, other struggles around the country. Um, it's fundamental, right? You have to fight. Um, and then I think another another thing is that we have to begin to really critically um, address our strategies and our targets, right? Um, we heard hundreds of times from media during the occupation, in that six days, who could not figure out why we were targeting Bank of America, right? Why are why are you going after the bank, right? Or in I mean, it was the banks, Chase and Bank of America. Um, and, and by the end of the six days, right, um, the media understood, right? They were the ones calling the shots. We need to start thinking about that uh, on a national scale, right? Who's really calling the shots? What are, what are the roots of the problems that we're seeing in the economy, socially? Um, who's, who, you know, what are the roots of the problems? And then who's at the root, right? Like, who, who is it who's calling those shots? Who is, it, who is it that's making those kinds of decisions? And we need to be smart and disciplined and follow our strategy, you know, and like work, work in a strategy um, to begin to change those things. That's, again, a very, another very fundamental lesson that we can draw both from Republic and from the struggles of, of workers abroad. Um, if, if the decision comes to, I mean, and, and if it's workers who make this decision, right, like that, ha that has to be a key part of it as well, right, but if the decision is that the only way to really change this system is for workers to run those factories, right? That isn't the decision that the workers at Republic made, but it could very well have been. Um, if that's the decision, then we need to be ready and willing to to fight to see, you know, to see that vision. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe two lessons are enough. <laughs> two lessons from Repu vo that that kind of cover both Republic and uh, and the work that's been going on with workers overseas. Maybe just one final question. Um, since you, you know, folks have been out on the road, you know, speaking in different places with other, you know, universities and with other groups around the country, what's been the response when people see this documentary when they hear the story? Because um, as you've mentioned over and over tonight, the media has not done justice to to worker struggles uh, in this country. Um, have, has it? been heartening to, 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 to see, you know, positive responses? Are people really intrigued or um, does it, you know, get people thinking about what they could do in their own communities? Yeah, I mean, there are really clear examples and Armando gave a few, uh, at least one, of, um, 
of the uh, Colibri workers in uh, Rhode Island who who decide you know even after the factory had closed um, decided they were still going to fight um, those guys and the Colibri workers you know didn't even get three days notice like the workers at Republic they just showed up one day and those you know the thing was posted on the door which happens a lot as a matter of fact. Um, after meeting with the Republic workers, they were inspired to try to do something and 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 to risk arrest, and that's what they did. Um, they haven't won yet, but but that decision to to fight um, and to kind of like think really creatively about what means they could use um, to fight the you know to fight back is really key. Um, and I think we believe that it's just one example of you know possibly many that. Republic really could still serve as a spark for um, for creating a movement that you know that moves towards worker justice in this country we or certainly we hope so um, yeah uh, it's been inspiring it's been inspiring hearing from people and knowing that people were watching what was happening in in Chicago and and supported us you know um, and learning that people really saw uh, that as their fight has been really really inspiring for us. Um.